Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Sam and Gushi, and today we're going to talk about tips and tricks on Dying Light 2. In this video, I'll show you guys some tips on how you can create really good synergy with your weapon and accessories, especially during the early game, so you can have a smooth playing experience that is rewarding and also very dominating. All of the footage you see today will be on hard mode, so if it works on hard, it's going to work across the game. And if you enjoyed this video, please add us a like. And if you want to see more Dying Light 2 tutorials, weapon guides, or build tips, you can click on the playlist link in the description below or the card above for all the videos we have done on this game all year. So Dying Light 2 have plenty of weapons you can choose from, but in terms of specific types, you have Blunt and Slash for your melee weaponry. And knowing how to use each type in its most optimal way, it's going to serve you in the long run. So Blunt weapons are meant for headshots and they're great at it. Here you can see I have the baseball bat, a blunt weapon, and I'm only aiming at the enemy's head so I can get the maximum return for the stamina cost that I invest per swing because the stamina cost as you can see is high and if I just swing randomly, I'll get in trouble. So blunt weapon, go for headshots, get the most return for your stamina investment. Now with slashing weapons, you want to aim at legs and the kneecaps area. So in this case, you can see I have the katana, two-handed, and I'm just aiming for kneecaps and legs because it's a slashing weapon and I can take out their legs, decapitate it, and keep them out of the fight. And kneecaps are optimal, so always get in that range, aim for it, and just go right for them. With a slashing weapon, you will see a lot of this uh, leg chop off animation. And once their legs are gone, they're out of the fight. So you don't necessarily have to finish them off you can just kind of leave them there and you can move on and take out other enemies legs as you flow through the entirety of the sequence you're facing and once they're down you can do whatever you can take out a weapon and just put them out of their misery so now that we have discussed how you can optimize your melee weapon aiming depending on the weapon type we want to further make everything go a lot smoother by using the accessories throwing knives now throwing knives are absolutely great in this game because they don't cost stamina and they are very high damage so they go along with any melee weapon you use so you can hold l2 and prompt the knives to come out and if you see that circle the target on the zombie right there that means the auto aim is activated let go of l2 to throw it and you can see damage is extremely high and after that you can just go either blunt weapon headshots or if the enemies rush you especially when there's a lot of them throwing knives acts as a trade in between where you can stun the enemy hurt them and help your stamina recover because it doesn't cost anything and this will allow you to swing your weapon more until you run out of stamina. So when everything is combined together, especially when you're being rushed by these zombie types, throwing knives, knee shots, head shots, depending on the weapon you got, you will stay safe, you will be very efficient, and even on hard mode, they can't do much against you. And another positive is that throwing knives are relatively cheap to craft, even on hard mode where I have limited resources, I never really run into trouble crafting them. And they're pretty easy to upgrade and they have a pretty wide range. Like they can go up pretty high level and become even better. So make sure you upgrade your throwing knives and craft as many as you can. And another tip I want to give to you guys is that managing weapon durability is key and there's a way to do it efficiently. So here you can see my katana has no mods but it has lost 50 durability. So once a weapon has lost 50, I add one mod onto it so it gets the 50 durability back and then I continue to use that one modded weapon until it loses another 50 durability. So here you can see my dirty katana with one mod has lost another 50. So now I add in the second mod so I get another 50 back. So this way, even though I added two mods, I get the full 100 durability recovery instead of adding two mod at once. So fully modded weapons obviously are very deadly. You can see combined with throwing knives here is my double modded dirty katana. Even at level one, doesn't matter what kind of zombies I face, there's not much they can do. Smooth gameplay, get that synergy down, and you're gonna have a lot of fun in this game because it just flows really well. Once you know, you know, blunt weapon headshots, slashing weapon kneecaps, if I need some stamina recovery or enemies are rushing me, throwing knives, you flow from that, you're gonna have plenty of fun and it's gonna be a very rewarding experience. So if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, please add us a like. If you have any comments, leave it in the comment section. As always, thanks for coming by, and we look forward to speak to you again very soon.